is looking for you when he calls you. He doesn't want your mother to show up. He doesn't want your father, your brother, or sister, or your best friend. When God calls for you, he wants you. I believe many times when you're praying, God don't know who's praying. You sound like Deacon George. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm an original. And I won't die a copy. God created you. And he knew what he wanted. He got what he wanted. God doesn't want anyone else when he calls for you. He doesn't want your famous actor or actress. He doesn't want you to mimic an entertainer or a star or a sports hero. God doesn't want you to become some famous singer or preacher. When God calls for you, he doesn't want to see Brother Ed. When I do leadership seminars, one of the things I really try to get across to people to become leaders is that they should learn from others but never become them. Right. Write it down and remember it. You can learn from anybody, but don't ever become them. Be true to who you are. Be yourself and let God reveal himself through your personality. As a matter of fact, true leaders do not try to make clones. True leaders release people to be themselves. True leaders inspire people to manifest their latent potential. True leaders get joy when people become themselves. I wonder why Jesus was so awesome. He never told the disciples, follow me and I will make you like me. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishes of men also. You'll be able to influence men with your own personality and your own latent power that God put within you. You know, it's amazing. The Bible only once in scripture says this. Imitate God as their children. Paul never says, follow me and become like me. He said, follow me like I follow Christ. He was talking about commitment, loyalty, faithfulness, stickability to Christ. God calls for you. He wants you. We are professionals at being other people. And we are failures at being ourselves. The tragedy is we invest in other people and not in ourselves. How many people you know are spending thousands of dollars every year to dress like other people? Come on, let's talk about it for a second. Everybody's wearing a certain type of shoe. You don't want to feel left out, so you buy the certain pair of shoe. And you can't even afford it. Everybody's living in a certain area. Well, you want to be with them, like them, like them, so you buy a house you can't afford. Everybody is driving a certain kind of car, and so you want to be like them, so you buy a car you know you can't pay for. And most of the people are driving around this city in a BMW with no food. You know it's true. We invest in other people to try to be like them. But I tell you, when you understand what we're going to learn this weekend, you're going to suddenly understand that it's not what you have that makes you somebody. It's who you are. Matter of fact, you are somebody without anybody. Anybody who needs somebody to be somebody ain't nobody. But when you are somebody, you don't need nobody to be somebody. you somebody all by yourself. Oh, come on, say hallelujah. When you know who you are, then you don't need things to give you value. You give value to things. You see, if I am a prince, the son of a king, if Prince Charles of England was to come to South Africa right now and walk into your cheap dry goods store and he was to pick up a plastic pair of shoe. Watch how it works. The shoe costs $5 and Prince Charles sits down on a stool in the cheap store 
suddenly becomes a royal stool. <laughs> he picks up the cheap pair of shoes. It's still five dollars. But the moment it touches his feet and he puts it on, the name changes from plastic to royal plastic. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And if he doesn't buy them, takes them off, puts them back in the box, what happens? The owner of the store looks around to make sure none of the workers are watching. And he runs and grabs the box, takes it in his office. Why? Five dollar pair of shoes now worth 500. Why? The prince had these on. You see, you can wear a two dollar blouse. If it's a royal back, it becomes a royal garment. You may live in a shack but if you are a prince, it's a royal shack. <laughs> Come on, say hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> the pants that you wear may be rags, but when you put them on, they become royal rags. <laughs> That's why when you know who you are, where you are is affected by your presence. That is why Jesus, it is said about him, even though he was God, didn't think it robbery, nor did he think it necessary to hold on to his Godship, but he could put aside his reputation because he knew who he was, make himself of no reputation. That means he didn't have to come and tell people, I'm God. I'm God, you know. Hey, buddy, I'm God. Do you know I'm God? I'm God. Hello, I'm God. Hey, I'm God. Woman at the rail, I'm God. No, he knew who he was. So it didn't matter that he was born in a cave because if you go to Israel today, you got to pay a couple thousand dollars to get there to take a picture of a rock. <laughs> Jesus turned a cave into a tourist attraction because of who he was. Jesus made a donkey famous. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the, the chair just became important. <laughs> Clap your hands, you understand what I'm saying tonight? God knows. And you and I were designed by God to be kings and princesses in the earth. We are sons of the living God. That's why we shouldn't strive for material things to in an attempt to become important. <laughs> the sickness of our society is that we make people feel less than important because of the accumulation of things that we have. It doesn't matter what you don't have or have. It's knowing who you are. Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends to be a blessing to them.